Welcome back to On the Cusp. We're in our second season with uh, the podcast. My co-host, Matt Snyder, is back with me for season two. And here today with us is Lindsay Pennington, the entrepreneur that started Cyprus by the Reveneer. Well, I have been there, okay? Took a large group there, and I was very impressed. Well, okay. thank you. Let's start with the first question. Why a restaurant? I am a facial plastic surgeon. I'm a doctor, that's kind of my, my full-time job and what I do and where my passions truly lie. And this was something that came about as kind of a, a passion project. My, it was my husband's idea. He's also a local physician. Um, we do a lot of traveling. We actually pick our vacations around the restaurants that we go to. One of the first questions a lot of times we get asked is, oh, do you guys cook a lot? And I'm like, absolutely not, I'm terrible. Um, but by being able to experience restaurants and food, I, I value it, I really enjoy it. And so it was something that we wanted to be able to be excited about places in Shreveport. And the restaurant community in Shreveport, I feel is actually really strong. Yeah. We have some really good places. It's one of the reasons when my husband and I were deciding whether or not to stay in Shreveport or move, one of the reasons we decided to stay is because we love going out to eat and there are so many good places and we wanted to be a part of that community. So. When do you think that, when do you think that shift happened? Because that restaurant scene, it, it, it got changed, strong quick. didn't it? it? Did. Like, so I moved here in 2011. My mind has changed dramatically since I first moved here. Like there was definitely, when I moved here, it was not like, yay, I'm moving to Shreveport. Right. Um, it honestly took me about seven years of living here before I was like, you know what? I I think I can see myself staying here. The whole time up until then, up until probably 2017, I was like, where am I moving? What am I doing next? This is a short term stop for me. And I think around 2017, 2018 is when stuff started getting really excited. You guys were doing a lot of events. There was a lot more new restaurants opening. People were opening up second places. The, the vibe just got really good and I think people were putting energy into it. That fires me up because I think that shows that a culture can shift quickly. You were willing to take the risk, okay? And there has to be a group of people that are willing to go in there and take that risk. And you did, and it's But crazy you know what success. makes it easier to take a risk? When you can see other people succeeding. And that's what happened in the restaurant yeah. game. These restaurants kept opening, the, taking this risk, and they were hitting. Frank's Pizza they were. was way out there. That was a big risk for Shreveport. Boom, but killed it. it took off. El Cabo, yeah. huge risk. It was Definitely. named the best Mexican restaurant in the Well, Louisiana. let's go to the biggest challenge. We talked a little bit about this before. So, you, you know, you came here, you went to the med school, you went through residency, started your practice. You and your husband knew you wanted to do something bigger. What was your biggest challenge? I think the biggest, well, is fear. Like it was- Yeah, you gotta get over the fear. So by, I think the, having gone through med school, having gone through residency, the nice thing about having the medical background is I know that good things are hard and that they take a long time. So I think that did give us some confidence in that like, I know that I can do just about anything if you give me enough time because I can work on it and I can like succeed. And so when my husband sat down with me and initially the first project that we came up with was the Every Man and King Distilling, our downtown project, which we are actually still actively working on. And so when he came to me with that, it was this huge, overwhelming, scary thing. But that's how I felt when I started my practice. I was newly, you know, I was a brand new doctor. I was newly pregnant. We had no money. We still had student loans. Um, and so we just start small and take it one step at a time. And the way I started that was with a business plan. He, my husband bought me a business plan for dummies. And I literally took that book and I wrote up a 28 page business plan and I went to the bank and that's how I started my medical practice. And so um, I was learning stuff along the way. And so when he came to me with this big, huge project, the challenge one was fear of like, oh my God, can we do this? And then if we can't or if it fails, what happens next? And my husband goes, okay, so we fail. So then we start over and we yeah. try something Key else. Yeah, does. that is so important. And that was a lot to because kind of Because you go, many people tell you this <laughs> isn't gonna work and yeah. you have to be like, okay, well then I'll shift. Well, that's the great thing yeah. about and entrepreneurship. And you all so well. Yeah, and that's the big thing about entrepreneurship. It's not failure, really and truly. You have to yeah. redefine failure in, in, in business. Absolutely. Just, that didn't work. 
Okay, let's do this. We're talking about like Jason Brady, which I want to go back to that to make sure we get like that really was the key, that wine country energy. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first time people were really able to taste what like yeah. a happening modern restaurant really would be like in Treeport. I have a very specific memory of um, when Anthony was there, We, my husband and I ordered the whole fish and he literally came out of the menu and we had never met him, never seen him before and he's like, People never order the whole fish. I just wanted to meet the people that ordered the whole fish. <laughs> was it was like good. it was like a big deal to yeah. have that on yeah. the menu. And now everybody has whole fish on the menu, yeah. and it's really good. And they have different kinds and different flavors, and people are ordering them. And it's just kind of the the people's comfort with experimenting has gotten higher. And it's because we provided the opportunity, and Shreveport has stepped up. Like it's been really fun to watch. Yeah, and Brady, to your point, he has done all kinds of stuff, had huge successes, but then made some mistakes. And, exactly. And it is learning. I mean, now it people is. pay him to consult on their restaurant because he has the knowledge of the wins and the losses. And you wow. learn from your failures, too. Like, yeah. we learned a lot from kind of all the difficult stepping stones that we ran into with the downtown project of what we wanted to kind of do different when we pivoted and, and during COVID. And, and COVID is kind of what originally made us pivot to doing the Cypress. And when we came up with the name Cypress by the Revenir, like the Revenir was the name of the restaurant we were planning and still planning to do downtown. And so we didn't want to get rid of that or, or end the work or lose any of the name. Yeah. We wanted to get that name brand recognition with Cypress by the Revenir so that when we do succeed in our downtown project, there's recognition there and people know our brand, know our culture, and maybe feel a little more comfortable taking that extra step of driving downtown and trying something new because they've yeah, experienced, sure. it, experienced right. it on Line Avenue too. So we're trying to kind of keep our fingers everywhere, if that makes sense. <laughs> I mean, I love that, and I think you're doing a great job. I do too. I think it's an exceptional job. Like I told you, I just took a large group there, and we loved it. And, you know, normally when I go in some of those restaurants, you know, for business uh, or, or pleasure, first 15 minutes you're – greeting everybody you know but when I came into Cyprus it was a totally different vibe and I had a very large group okay and the drink selection was incredible okay everybody was ordering off the special drinks okay um, so it was totally different but you're not from Shreveport I'm not tell me about that and I think being not from Shreveport has been a blessing and a challenge in this process so by not being from Shreveport I my husband and I don't know a lot of people we didn't go to high school here we didn't have a group of college friends that moved back with us so when we're starting a business or you're looking for investors it can make it a little bit harder to kind of break into some of those social social circles or groups but at the same time it gives us a little bit of outside perspective. Um, we like to travel a lot. We have a lot of experience that's outside of Shreveport and we can see how fun and exciting stuff is outside Shreveport. And we just wanted to bring a little taste of that here for ourselves, for our family and for Shreveport. Cause Shreveport's well, we're glad been great you picked to us. us. Yeah, and I okay. really want to know this because I, I struggle with this. And I think a lot of people that are trying to move the bar in Shreveport struggle with this at times go in waves of how I feel about Shreveport at that moment. And I, you know, and I'm pretty positive on Shreveport most of the time, but like, it's a hard decision, like to stay here and take these risks and do this, like help me just as somebody else that's doing yeah, it. No, like, how do you process that? Cause I bounce back and forth. At so times. the way that I process it and, and the ebbs and flows, it's actually kind of funny. I will, get down on Shreveport and get down on how I'm feeling when I've been here a lot and I'm working really hard and I get kind of burnt out and then I'll take a trip and it actually makes me appreciate Shreveport more when I'm like, oh my gosh, I went to Austin for the weekend and I ate at some cool restaurants, but I had to wait four or five hours. I couldn't eat at the places I wanted yeah. to eat because you needed to you make reservations. You couldn't get a reservation when couldn't, you wanted it? Exactly. And then like my daughter skinned her knee and I needed, I wanted a Band-Aid, but Band-Aid had to have Mickey on it. There wasn't a Target within yeah, 45 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Like, And so it kind of gave me the ease of like, I know when I go to a place, I can park. I know it's only going to take me 15 minutes to get somewhere. It's going to be really easy to get an Uber. It's like the ease of living here is so nice that I'm so excited to come home and just slow place. things yeah, down. Absolutely. So I got to go. I have to go a lot. Yes. yes. But, well, but I do like coming back. Yes. And I think, and that's a great point because catching up the things that we're going for, the events, the restaurants. That is so huge to me mm -hmm. because if that stuff gets closer to why we're traveling in the first place, 
and I get it. We're not going to have a professional NBA team tomorrow, and we're not going to have some of those things. We're probably not going to have the biggest concerts, you know, four days a week, whatever. But a lot of the things we can have. We can have cool wine events. We can have awesome restaurants. And we can have cool concerts. Yeah. It doesn't need to be the biggest thing in the country for it to be cool and for right. it to be fun and for it to That's be exciting right. and to get people to be here and to be outside with their families and connecting with people and kind of just being a good positive place. It doesn't have to be the biggest and the best. It just has to be good and cared for. And I think you're doing a really good job at that. So I think we just have to have more voices. Like y'all, uh, if that... If the amount of voices that are saying the same thing start to catch up to some of the old voices that have been around saying stay the same, Shreveport, stay the same, I think you're starting to see the ripples and I don't of that. even know if people realize they're saying stay the same. They I, don't realize they're saying yeah, it, but they are. Yeah, they probably they, and they, do not. And they, exactly, they, they are. Because I just, when my husband and I were talking about this last night, like, there was a definite shift in me and there was like, you know, I would make fun of Shreveport when I'd be trying to get my friends to come visit me and nobody wanted to come here. And they're like, well, I live in Chicago. Why would we come visit yeah, you here? Yeah, yeah. And um, so it was one of those things that there are things now here where I'm like, when my friends come from out of town, places to take them, things to do. And it's really fun to watch even people who've known me the entire kind of 15 years that I've been here be like, well, it's way more fun to come see you now. Like yeah. Shreveport mm -hmm. is changing. But, and I think people need to just be more aware. It's even that like positive self-talk, like just saying nice things, being positive about stuff, being excited about stuff can help change everything in general. And cheering on each other. Like I, yes. I had absolutely zero to do with any of the amazing things y'all are doing, but I felt so proud of what y'all did yeah, and so that. pumped about that as like proud that we had it. And somebody took that risk and did it. So I think people have to take pride in things and be proud of each other for doing the risk Absolutely. instead of always judging them and going a couple steps towards change and then getting scared and, and I coming think back. It's, it is a challenging thing because when we're, we're working on the downtown project, like it's still, it's still going. It's still not at this point a successful thing. Like that's something that it's one of the first things people ask about. And I'm like, okay, yep, we're talking about where we failed there, the missteps that we have. And then now we're getting to talk about the exciting Cypress stuff. And it's more of like, as long as people just show up, it's one of those things that you don't, not everybody in the city is gonna start a restaurant or, or come up with a concert right. series or do anything like but that. Support but support those that do. But what they can do is they can share a Facebook post. That's they right. can say something positive. And they can they, not say something negative. Correct. I don't even care if you have, if you think I'm the biggest moron ever, <laughs> that's you don't say well, anything about, about me, I'm gonna agree on. Yeah. <laughs> okay? We yeah. totally agree on it. Stop the negativity. Yeah, just, okay? yeah. just don't let me do me. If don't you even post it, like, don't <laughs> even put it out there. If it's yeah. not something positive going on in Shreveport, don't do it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, yeah. And I because think, there's plenty, and that's what we want to do on On the Cusp. We want people like you and your husband to come on here and say, we took the risk, yeah. it was not easy, was not your restaurant my events are not for every street porter Kurt, and hey. that is what we need <laughs> and it is okay my dad would walk into your restaurant and not get it at oh all he God. hates my events that we're cool with that yeah it's well, not wait a minute. For I'm him. in the same demographic as he. But as you're as cooler, today. Dave. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that. Okay, but my group, now, we were we were really by the by the time we finished, we were pretty rocking. Okay, and had to call an Uber, but uh, we we did have a good time. There are nothing wrong, and I like in a member of the downtown dinner clubs. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that, and it's great, and we need them to exist. It's just a different vibe. But we need different energies than staying in the same way we went out to a nice dinner for the last hundred years. Well, I took a large group from New Orleans. It's not often that we get yeah. economic development groups out of South Louisiana to come here, but I needed something different. Mm -hmm. I needed great food to show them, hey, we got it going on in Shreveport too, okay? There's a lot and of places. And boom, we rocked it. It's the, because you I always us. make the argument about details. Like people will try to say, oh, they'll say, man, it's hard to make it in Shreveport. And I'll say, It's hey, hard to make it everywhere. I want you to tell me some examples too of places that went for it, mm -hmm. did the detail stuff that didn't make it, especially south of, you know, Pyrmont 
and they will, it's hard to name one. It is. It's hard to come up with one. And it's I, not as hard as people act like it is. So but. I think it's just you putting the time in. I think if being a business owner was for everyone, everyone would do it. I, I think there's not everybody yeah. is, is made for that. There's a lot of sacrifices that come with it. And I know that like when I finish my work day at my doctor job, I'm going to the <laughs> restaurant and then I'm going home to my two kids and then I'm sitting there and with the free time that I have with my husband, we're running over financials of his business, my business, yeah, you have then to the be restaurant. Wired for that. yes. That's so different. That's it it is it's not for everyone and um, it's not how we see our lives forever. Um, but it is something that, especially after having kids, was kind of a catalyst for us because I was like my God, I'm obsessed with my children. I don't want my children moving to Austin or to Dallas yeah. as mm. forever. Like I, I want to be I around my grandkids. I got two in college. So my biggest fear, okay, right now is they leave. Yeah. Okay. And, and I fought hard I to know. keep them in school in Louisiana. Okay. And I, I, I won that battle. So, well, one more point I want to make yeah. sure to make because I think it's important. And if anybody watching this could take away one thing, I think this is important. Shreveport has always been great at making their money in Shreveport and traveling. That's what a lot of Shreveport does for a long time. I want to encourage them because I think we're both trying to do it to bring what they see back. Absolutely. Don't just go do it and talk about how awesome that place was. Every trip I try to take something to my clients, take something to my business. And I think if we all start doing that more, our city will catch up in that gap Absolutely. of how far behind we I are. Think and, and we can be better that. recruiters. Yeah. That okay. bathroom, that <laughs> lobby to that bathroom has been on social media more than any restaurant in the last yeah. two and, years. And But that kind of stuff is popular. When you that's go right. other places, yeah. there's that's Instagrammable right. spots because that's part of the culture change and the social media. That was so that. smart. Like, I was like, boom, that's what we have to do. People have to bring back what they're seeing and what they know is killing it, and we got to do it here. Yeah, yeah, like even the inspiration for the wallpapers in the bathrooms was a trip to London, and all the bathrooms in London are these super like decked out, pimped yeah. out bathrooms. And we're like, who does bathrooms like mm -hmm. this? Well, let's let's try that. Let's do something <laughs> fun. And we even put details into the bathrooms of the restaurant because that was something that other cultures were doing that we wanted to bring in and do something fun. So, uh, what's next? Well, we'd like to finish the downtown project. So we'd really, we, we have not given up on having a di distillery. We haven't given up on having a speakeasy downtown. We're, all of our bartenders have been trained by Death & Co. when we hope to bring our bar program downtown to a more kind of like chill underground vibe. We hope to open the kind of fancy French restaurant with our chefs that we have. We want an event space. Like we haven't given up on any of that. So we're still chugging along slowly but surely. Great, well, Lindsay, thanks for Thank coming down guys. this morning. Because now yeah, I know you, we're so. doing this early. You probably, they don't know that, okay? We're yeah. doing this early so that you can go back and do your day job. Do my work, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Guys. Thank you.